This is part of a national security mission. But it has mission. never done this under a national emergency where Con President we've declared, but We've declared national emergencies to promote democracy in Belarus, to promote democracy in Zimbabwe. But it didn't involve to, taking to, to affect it, money that Congress refused to appropriate. But they didn't refuse to appropriate it. They passed a law specifically saying the president could have this authority. It's in the plain statute. That's a decision that Congress made. And if people don't like that, they can address it. Pretty hot interview there on Fox News Sunday. The White House not backing down on the border wall in the face of growing political and growing legal challenges. Stephen Miller insisting that the crisis is real and that President Trump will not ignore it as his predecessors did. Mercedes Schlapp, White House Director of Strategic Communications, live with us out of Miami today. And Mercedes, welcome back to America's Newsroom. I know you're there for the Venezuela announcement later today. Good but let, let's talk about the border here, first of all. Well, what's the White House's reaction to some of the pushback now on the legal sense for this, the lawsuits? Look, we feel that we're in strong legal grounds and in pushing forward and declaring this national emergency. We know that we have the presidential authority to do so. Uh, Congress has, has these statutes, and it's been used before over 50 times uh, since 1976. So we feel like we're on, on solid legal ground on How this come, Based on what is that? The, the Mercedes? It's, look, it's been used before, and what we're seeing right now at the border is uh, an, uh, an emergency. I mean, we're seeing the fact that our Border Patrol agents are having a tough time uh, having the operational support needed uh, to secure the border. Uh, you're also seeing the fact that it's a humanitarian and security crisis, as the president has spoken about this issue time and time again. We've seen criminals, smugglers, coyotes, human traffickers taking advantage of our immigration laws and also putting at risk many vulnerable families uh, who are coming from Central America. So this, again, it is the obligation of this president to uh, provide the safety of Americans in the United States, and he's upholding his duty. And part of this is declaring this national emergency. Okay, two specific questions. Did the statements from the Rose Guard on Friday hurt your case? Uh, the, the detractors would argue that uh, the president said that he, he did not have to go this route. Uh, and then he also Look, said he that he'll, he'll lose a few legal cases, but ultimately the win at the, at the U.S. Supreme Court. Does that hurt your standing before a judge? Look, we know, we know the realities of judicial activism, as you've seen so many times with the Ninth Circuit, for instance. But at the same time, the president didn't want to have to choose this route because he wanted to see if Congress would negotiate a better deal. They, of course, fell short with uh, pushing forward $1.375 billion uh, towards the physical barriers. Now, that, of course, is better than the zero or less than $1 that Speaker Pelosi was going to offer. But again, it's being able to have access these additional funds that our Border Patrol agents need, the ability that we're going to be able to immediately start building uh, the, these physical barriers along the southern border in these most vulnerable areas, and the fact that we're going to be able to prioritize based on the needs and, and where we believe that uh, we need to be building. Would these you barriers. argue that there is a pot of money that is outside the, the purview of the legal challenge? A pot of money that may total well, some $4 billion? Is, is uh, that well, part we're, of this? we're definitely, uh, definitely part of this is. The forfeiture fund that comes from the Department of Treasury, which is about $600 million. We're also looking into the Department of Defense, the counter drug activities, where you're able to build fences and roads uh, in areas where there's high density of drug smuggling. So this is an opportunity to really be able to build these physical barriers in much-needed areas, as we know, and even Democrats but I, the, the have point been on the here, record I just want to be clear about the point, is that you can go ahead, and, you're making the case that you can do that now while the legal process plays out. Is that what the White that House is correct. Those, That is correct. In those pots of money, uh, we can start building immediately. We can start working with our contractors. Uh, the president met last week with a general from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers to get this process going. President, the president wants to move fast. He recognizes that this problem has been festering for decades. The mere fact that we haven't been able to close the immigration loopholes, the mere fact that the Democrats are pushing an open borders agenda and really do not care if illegal immigration surges. So the president wants to take action. 
We want to push forward legal immigration into America, okay, wanna, but I'm, we also have to gain operational control of the border. I, got I just want to move to two other topics in the time I have left here. Venezuela, big speech this afternoon. What's the message about kicking Maduro out? Because so far he's been pretty stingy. And to assume that he's just going to leave um, might be a bit short-sighted. What's the message today? The message is the president's going to deliver a strong message to the Venezuelan people. We stand with Venezuela. That community, millions of people are going to the streets. Millions of people are speaking up against the oppressive Maduro regime that has destroyed the social and economic fabric of that country. It is time for Maduro to exit. We know that President Guaido is gaining so much support from the civil society. That includes the labor unions, the churches, the students. And we know that more and more it, they're coming together, even the rank and file of the military supporting uh, President Guaido. Maduro is simply a Cuban puppet. And what we know is that Cuba has sent over 20,000 security forces to Venezuela. Their interest is not that of the Venezuelan Do, people that appear, Maduro is starting. Does it appear, though, that Maduro has more support than you thought? I, and perhaps you underestimated not. his staying I, I, power. A absolutely not. More and more countries are recognizing the legitimacy of the Guaido presidency. And we know that it's about 50 nations right now. This is not going to be easy, but we are looking for a peaceful transition in Venezuela. And we know that we stand with President Guaido. The president, President Trump spoke with him a couple okay. weeks ago and talked about the historic moment right now in Venezuela. It's okay. not going to be easy, uh, but we're going to continue this maximum pressure campaign on Venezuela. Last topic, Andrew McCabe, what is the reaction from the White House? We've heard from the president on Twitter. What's your reaction to the claims that he made last night on 60 Minutes? Well, I mean, McCabe has no credibility. He was obviously fired by the FBI. Uh, we know he's lied on multiple occasions, including under oath, and he's a partisan hack. So he can, he's trying to sell a book, but the mere fact is, is that he's a liar. All right. Did he, what did he say last night? that was new? You know, I don't really think there was much new news to McCabe's interview. As you know, last week he had to take back certain statements that he's made. Uh, and we've had our, and Rod Rosenstein coming out basically saying that uh, McCabe's comments are inaccurate. So I, I, I don't understand why they keep giving this platform to McCabe but when he, he's an he absolute this, liar, he, he where we this, know clearly yeah. He made the suggestion that the president was relying on Putin's advice with regard to North Korea's missile program and not the intelligence community. Is that true? Look, we, we know where McCabe's political tendencies lie. He obviously doesn't like the president, and he obviously was targeting the president. And in essence, we're not going to believe anything that McCabe has to say because of the fact that not only has he lied to investigators, he's lied under oath, and he's, there's no credibility to his statements. Last question. How long is Rod Rosenstein in his position? Uh, you know, that, that's a decision for Rod Rosenstein to make. The president so has a no good relationship with as, him. You have no information as to when his tenure is complete. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, Mercedes Schlapp, thank you for your time. The event this afternoon on Venezuela, we'll be watching from here. Thank you out of Miami today. Thank you so much.